Hello, my bountiful bikini bottoms. Welcome to another episode of Whatcha Packin'. I am here with Brooklyn's own. Yeah, Brooklyn's own. Magami. Hi. Are you from Brooklyn? From Brooklyn? Yeah, born and raised. Brooklyn no way. All, all, all my life. What part of Brooklyn? From Sunset Park. Okay. Except for the, the bit of time that I lived in Staten Island with my parents. The Forgotten Borough. Truly. It, I always say Staten Island is New Jersey's undescended testicle. <laughs> like, it should have been part of Jersey, but it didn't quite get there. Well, it usually <laughs> goes like this. Brooklyn, Staten Island, New Jersey. Exactly. I'm I'm halfway there, I guess. <laughs> Are you going to go to Jersey? Uh, maybe. I go to Jersey all the time. For gigs. For men's. For trades. <laughs> For trades. There you go. <laughs> How long you been doing drag? Like eight years. Wow. Yeah. So you're from Brooklyn, you're born and raised. Are you a Latina? Uh, of course, I'm a Puerto Rican Dominican. There we go, <laughs> there we go. The good old fashioned New Yorkian. I love it, <laughs> it's so funny. You know, any Spanish that I had learned before yeah. was New Yorkian Dominican, you know. So wrong. Wrong. <laughs> People will assume that I can speak Spanish and I'm like, I can speak like Puerto Rican Spanglish. There you go. <laughs> can you cook? Of course I can cook. I love that. <laughs> I didn't become a big girl for no reason. Oh hey, oh, I'm with you on that. How did Megami come? about I am a huge geek like literally like most of my tattoos are like geeky things uh -huh. so I'm like I've always loved like Star Wars and like video games all of that and Megami really came from I would go to cosplay convention yeah near like, comic-con flame con all of those things mm -hmm. and you know I never wanted to dress up as like the boy character of course. so I started doing like drag cosplay but even the boy characters are so hyper feminine like that was a huge part of my my childhood and when I was like hey I'm I I'm really into costuming. Let me let me be a girl character. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of snowballed from there of like I started doing drag gigs that were specifically geek related and then like won a few competitions and I was like Maybe I can be like more than just like a cosplayer. It's just like fashion and stuff. And do you still go to conventions? Oh, of course. I'm like, I get my tickets immediately every single year. I just love being around other geeks and like getting to share in the things that we love and not feel awkward about it. Geek spaces have traditionally been a very like straight white guy kind of thing. But like anytime I can take up space and say, no, there's like, queer people, there's people of color, there's women. It's not just for like the straight white boys. Not anymore, honey. Yeah. We're here, we're all geeks, and we, we want to have fun too. So. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> to me, the best people in the world are the nerds and the geeks. I married one. Yeah. I gave birth to one, <laughs> so I totally get it. So how many times did you audition? Five times. And you got in on number five. Yep. When you finally got that call after auditioning five times, what was that like for you, Megami? It was like the most like satisfying moment of my life. Yay. Just because when I started auditioning, I was a little bit maybe more rough around the edges. Okay. But I was like, this is a goal I have set for myself. And you know, I'm a Taurus. We are reliable, dependable, and we will get the job done. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all of these years of work have finally paid off. And all of these years of believing in myself when maybe other people didn't or didn't see that for me, it proved myself right. Like, I, I'm worthy of this. I'm good enough. You're a wonderful, wonderful performer. Thank you. And um, you're a great lip syncer. Thank you. And one thing I really <laughs> like about your drag is you always want to use your platform to deliver some kind of message. Yes. How important is that to you? I mean, that is the most important thing drag is my heart and soul and you know given the like current political climate i'm just like i want to always be able to use any platform and privilege to help as many people as i can mm. my favorite thing in the world is making people laugh mm. but i'm like when i have an opportunity like this i like i have to take it to say something that matters to millions of people uh, across the country so when you were preparing and you knew you got the gig. Was there anything you knew you had to have, like glasses or your beautiful crown hat or a good luck charm? Was there anything you needed to prepare? The one thing that I know I did like end up spending a lot of money preparing on was actually like a lot of my boy clothes. Cause I was like, I'm so used to just putting all my money into drag that like I am 
always wearing like ratted, ripped, crappy clothes out of drag. So I was like, you know what? This is a moment to treat myself and like, uh, Maybe it looks a little better. <laughs> I'm not even gonna judge you because I'm a sweatpant wearer. I love a sweatsuit. I love a matching sweatsuit. Yeah. If it has holes and I love it, I'm still gonna wear it. Absolutely. Hey. But you know, I'm gonna be on national television. I need to wear uh, something a little nicer. That's it. <laughs> I thought you had a great run and you won your girl group challenge. Yeah. I loved how you were always in character, which explains a lot with your cosplaying <laughs> and things like that. And you went home on the Rusical challenge, yeah. not for sucking, but for just fading. Yeah. And it happens. Did you understand that when you heard that critique? It was the best way, I mean, not that I wanted to go home, but I think it was the best way to go home because all the judges were very clear that like no one did bad. Like nope. everyone, the Rusical was phenomenal and I had so much fun being a part of it. And it was just, you know, this season, the competition was very, very, very stiff from like day one. Yes. If I had to go home, I went home on like an incredibly positive note where like, I did good. Actual, great, positive, beautiful way to look at it. Let's talk about some of these. This one here is very Victor and Rolf. Explain this to me, how'd that come to your mind? So it was kind of inspired by the music video to Addicted to Love. Robert Palmer. Robert Palmer, mm -hmm. yeah. I think with my drag, the one word that kind of boils everything down is just fantasy. Mm -hmm. I want to become another person, be a chameleon, become a character, something that's over the top and otherworldly exaggerated. Like this is one of the most like iconic 80s videos. I wanna kind of bring that into my look and just like over exaggerate it all the way. Were you gonna slick back your hair? Oh, yep, had the, the slick back hair, <laughs> red lipstick, yes. heavy on the blush. Yes, I love it, <laughs> very 80s. Yeah. And the middle one, for me, I feel like this is a very Megami aesthetic. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. This was probably my favorite look that I didn't get to wear. Like, I made all three of these myself. Oh, amazing. And it, this is just like something that speaks to me out of drag as just a, uh, you know, a punk kid from New York. Uh -huh. uh, so I'm like, anytime I can use like chains and spikes and safety pins, that's like, that's just my aesthetic as a human being. Did you grow up loving punk rock music? I literally have a My Chemical Romance tattoo. That's like my, that's my heart. I love that your generation thinks My Chemical Romance is punk rock. <laughs> You're it's more it's emo. pop punk. Yeah. yeah, it's emo, emo. I'm yes. a very emotional, sad person. I had an emo <laughs> child too. I went through Panic at the Disco, went through My Chemical Romance. Very that. <laughs> all out, that, you know, Fall Out Boy, all, all those things. Theatrical. Yes. It's punk, but with like, you know, theater kid punk. Yeah, so. Exactly. <laughs> and this red bandana number is fun. Yeah. That fantasy is real, and you made this one too. Yeah. So like there's like literally probably like hundreds of bandanas on this jacket. I love the color red. Red always looks good on Latina. So I was like, I just want something that's gonna move and look big and cool. Did you teach yourself how to sew? Did somebody teach you how to sew? How did that happen? Yeah, I taught myself how to sew and it was literally just because of cosplay. Like, especially being a, you know, a woman of substance. Yes. They don't usually carry my sizes in a lot of places. And when you want to do like a obscure anime character, you, have to make it. you can't go to like Party City and pick this up. So I taught myself how to sew, just like YouTube videos and things like that. So um, good. My grandmother was actually a seamstress all of her life and she knew how to sew some. I imagine she kind of passed the skill down to me. Passed the torch as it <laughs> exactly. were. Exactly. Well, Megami, I thought you did an incredible job. Thank you. I thought you were so much fun to watch. I know you took it seriously. You could tell. I love that you love drag and having a platform to raise awareness and you know, bring our attention to certain things, and I, I appreciate that. Thank and you. thank you for having such a great time for allowing me to judge you. You were wonderful. Uh, well, you know, I am, was so happy to be there and had such a great time, and I love that drag has done this for me, and I just hope uh, more people get to experience drag like that, too. Oh, I hope so, too, sweetheart. You are a rue girl, officially. Oh, my God. And so it <laughs> begins. Thank you, Megami. Thank you, Michelle. And thank you for watching another episode of What You Packin'. I'll see you kids next time. Mwah!
And it appears you like horror too. I see like a vampire type of batted woman on your right thigh. It's called the Batwoman. Ooh. It's literally just like this naked woman with, with like, bat wings. wings. And like, I thought it was gorgeous, so. Uh... Bats scare me. You know where to go for the Mecca of gay <laughs> It's right here, and you know that's right. So make sure you click to subscribe so you never miss a thing.